Hi, this is David with EV World News. We're talking about electric vehicles, green energy, and the stock market. I'm here with the weekly update, the top news stories of the week. First off, we're going to talk a little bit about a report about Oslo electric buses not working in the cold. This isn't really true, but people have been calling it a green failure. Social media users and tabloids have been sharing the news that Oslo's new feed of electric buses has all stopped working due to freezing temperatures. But what really happened? Now, we're going to put this into perspective. The temperatures were minus 7 to minus 14 degrees Celsius, which is still above zero Fahrenheit. They're saying an electric bus failure. They can't run below minus 11 Celsius. 320 buses taken out of commission according to the thing. Other articles claim more than 140 bus departures were affected in the Scandinavian capital since the start of December. The question with this is, Oslo has 4,000 daily bus departures. And the truth is, according to a spokesperson from the company that runs the electric buses says they're an extreme exaggeration. We cancel an average between 50 and 100 departures out of more than 4,000 daily departures for a few days. They, count, they did have challenges with the range of the buses being shorter in cold weather. We solved this by changing the charging shifts and also by fixing the charging infrastructure. The issues have been fixed and the electric buses continue to run as usual and they're no longer canceling buses due to the cold. Electric vehicle can't draw on heat produced by the motor to warm the inside of the car like an ice car can. They have to generate heat in other ways, hence using more energy from the battery, which means losing in range. The cold does reduce an EV's range and charging speed, the buses need to stay plugged in early on before they start the route and stay plugged in overnight. When you do that, the battery can start and operate at its maximum range. The next one's kind of interesting. This has to do with two wheelers now being powered by sodium ion batteries as opposed to lithium ion batteries. And just like it sounds, sodium is salt, a lot more available. A company in China called Tail G has revealed its new sodium ion battery tech company's luxury e-bikes will be the first to feature its sodium ion batteries they will be initially available in china momentum is building a number of companies are exploring their potential and mobility applications including battery industry behemoths like catl and byd this company is implementing the technology with tail g in its luxury e-bike range for the mid to premium consumer market the global electric two-wheeler market is growing at a rate of about 20% year over year. Tail G aims to capitalize on its first mover advantage to create a complete ecosystem for long-range sodium ion-powered light electric vehicles. The sodium ion battery has a super long range capable of reaching 115 kilometers. Even temperature below zero Celsius while maintaining a speed of 25 kilometers per hour. The life cycle exceeds 2,000 cycles. The battery retains about 93% of its capacity in temperatures as low as minus 20 Celsius making it ideal for winter use. I don't know if I'd want to be outside on a bicycle when it's that cold, but you know, I, I get it. The battery safety performance also exceeds industry standards due to the IPX7 grade waterproof technology that covers the entire pack. Sodium ion batteries are often touted as the most promising alternative to ubiquitous lithium ion tech. On our next topic, one of the things kind of interesting, 40% of US electricity is emissions free. And a lot of this is, I'm gonna to get to the graph, is solar is 6%, hydroelectric is 6%, wind is 10%, and nuclear is 18%. The total of those four is about 40%. The big dog is still natural gas at 44%, and coal, which is 16%. I think a lot of people think that coal is used far more heavily, and it is in certain states. If you go to certain states in the US, coal is used much heavier than other places. But anyways, this is just really pleasing information. Now, here's another fun one. For all the trouble that Elon Musk has caused in the past year with changing Twitter to X and other things, he's still $100 billion ahead of where he was 12 months ago. You know, there's things that people say that Elon Musk has driven X into the ground, but somehow Musk keeps getting richer. And a lot of this is the value of Tesla went up and SpaceX significantly went up. SpaceX is currently valued at $175 billion. And so it still makes him the world's richest man. Um, X has a valuation of only $19 billion, which is less than half of what he paid for it originally. And so that, that part is kind of interesting. X has around $13 billion in debt. The company requires $1.5 billion in interest per year. That's a lot of money. That's like $125 million a month. It's crazy to think about that. Anyways, other big news this week. Chevy issues a stop sale 
order for Blazor EVs to address software issues. Now, the Blazor, a Blazor was sold to Edmunds, and they had 23 separate issues with the vehicle that they bought to test out. In this particular case, most of the issues had to do with software. So I, I believe that Chevy will resolve most of these because they weren't really the drivetrain or anything else. And I've heard, and this is a Chevy issue, but I've heard like the Ford CEO talk about how they have over 100 separate software vendors writing code for Ford and trying to make all that work on an EV has been a challenge. So they've tried to change and write go in-house writing their own code for their own EVs. So I, I, th I suspect Chevy's probably doing something similar and it, it's made things a challenge to see what they can, can get. Now, our next one is, this is the last article for this week, electric vehicles, 22 EVs will charge at Tesla superchargers starting in 2024. In the charging networks, non-Tesla chargers have about an 80% success rate of working when you go to charge, meaning you have a one in five chance of the not being able to charge because there's something wrong with the way your vehicle communicates with the charging network, something's broken, who knows. At Tesla chargers, that is a fraction of a percent. So it's less than 1%, significantly less than 1% happens. It's something like more like one in 300 times versus one in five. And so a lot of companies now want to switch to the Tesla NACS network. Older superchargers won't work with non-Tesla vehicles, ones that were put out before 2019, because they use combined charging ports. 12,000 of Tesla's network of 17,000 will be open to non-Tesla EVs with adapters. All of these cars are going to be eligible to use the Tesla network. So that'll be really good for those companies. And that's all I got for this week. I hope, please leave us a comment. Let us know what you'd like to hear about in the future. And make sure to subscribe if you hadn't. And please press the like button so this will get shown to more viewers. Have a great day. Happy New Year. 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 Happy New Year.